Welcome to Seller Rat TV with your host, the Seller Rat, Addison X. So, winemaking is all about chemistry, and we're really lucky today because we're going to sit down with our awesome lab tech, Amanda. Um, but you're not formally trained no, in, in I'm chemistry. No, I'm not formally trained anthropologist. You're a formal bachelor degree in anthropology. So, I mean, that's so interesting. How did you get into... Um, after college, I couldn't really do much with just the bachelor's degree in mm -hmm. anthropology. I didn't want to work an office job where I'm sitting down all day, so I was interested in winemaking mm -hmm. and um, so you nature and vineyards, and I have friends at the cello who uh, sell their grapes okay. here, and they got me connected to a crust job, and then one thing led to another, I started doing the lab work, and had a full, they offered me a full-time position. So you've worked the harvest here? Yeah, two. Harvest. Two harvests? Awesome. So then you know what it's like to be in the trenches too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, you know, I see you buzzing around everywhere during the harvest mm -hmm. and everything. Like, you have a demanding job. Yeah, it is pretty demanding. You have to keep a very tight schedule of the fermentation, um, when the grapes come in, you have to take the analysis mm -hmm. on those to know how much yeast to add, different nutrient additions, and then keep testing the grapes and the wines throughout the beginning mm -hmm. life cycle. Now, I mean, like, what's your relationship uh, with the, the winemaker? I mean, what, well, you, you, you share a lot of the workload. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about with Cecilia? With Cecilia. With, our, 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 uh, Cecilia okay. is our assistant winemaker. Yeah. Well, um, that's my relationship with Yeah, what's your well, relationship with her? We like? sort of balance off each other. Um, you know, I give her the numbers. She uses the analysis, the numbers, in order to direct the wines in a healthy direction. Um, so she depends a lot on the numbers that I give her. And then, of course, the palate comes into play, too. But as you said, part of winemaking is chemistry, and the yeah. other part is the artistic, passionate part. So you're pretty much, you're generating, like, all of the data. Yeah, it's all the um, quantitative, mm -hmm. a lot of quantitative. And, and you really, I mean, it's a one-man show. You're doing all of that by yourself. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So, I mean, when you were studying anthropology, did you spend time in the lab? Well, I studied a lot of chemistry and biology in high school and some chemistry in college, so I had a lot of lab time. I understand the basic foundations of lab work. I mean, you're great at what you do. You definitely Thanks. so. It <laughs> shows that you have a background in it. Yeah. So is this something that you want to pursue in the future? Like, do you want to be an assistant winemaker someday, a winemaker? No, I don't think I'm going to go in that direction. This has just been a really good experience to learn the holistic approach to winemaking, not just the numbers and the science, mm -hmm. but also the, uh, the palette, the sensory mm -hmm. part of it, the artistic expression, the difference between old world and new world mm -hmm. winemaking, because we have all different types of clients here who like different styles. And um, just being able to work a crush and work in that, um, work with that camaraderie. With yeah. Team people. I mean, the that's an awesome, awesome family. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing is we all work together, you mm -hmm. know, and the lab tech is just such an integral part of the whole crew. Um, you know, and that's really interesting how uh, you get to see how the numbers, the raw numbers really yeah. fit in with yeah. the, you know, the palette and how that works together yeah. to yeah. make, you know, wine and yeah. shape it. I think the numbers really help direct, if you're not, if your palette's not so sure, the numbers can help give you more of a precise knowledge, and I think they bounce off the palette and the numbers bounce off of one another. How long did it take you to get up to speed with the different um, tests you had to have to do on a daily basis? Um, that, it didn't take me that long. My first harvest, I had someone else was here and she showed me briefly and then Cecilia also showed me too, but it's not that hard to get down. I mean, there's a lab manual mm -hmm. to help you with, know what the measurements are, but then you memorize those measurements pretty quickly, like 10 mils of this wine with, you know, five mils of this acid and 
Is there is there a lot of double checking? Do you perform tests twice often? Um, or you've not really. Something is strange. Mm -hmm. Then we'll check it again. But um, there, I usually don't have as many errors on mm -hmm. rare errors as I did when I first began. So I mean, a lot of the uh, equipment that uh, people use at home might be different. You know, they're using those for like hydrometers. Yeah, hydrometers and alcohol. calculators and mm -hmm. stuff. You know that we have electronic versions here. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what kind of tests are you still performing manually? Well, right now, we're performing, we're doing a lot of quality control on our lines that are just you know, sleeping, for lack of a better word, that is aging. So we do um, check the volatile acidity, the bacteria levels, um, checking the total acidity, or titratable acidity, pH, free sulfur levels, mm -hmm. to make sure that we have enough sulfur in there to mitigate the growth of bacteria. So, uh, so you're... Um, you're working on wines that you know, are essentially finished and they're just in the barrel. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, there are 09 wines that we're also watching that are finishing up with their primary and secondary fermentation. So, mm -hmm. Then we have, and after malolactic, sometimes they'll start again with primary oh, really? fermentation. So we'll have to, the alcohol is going to change then mm -hmm. over the course of six months or so. So, how often do you have to check back in on the same wine? Uh, well, I mean, with our older wines, we do monthly analysis. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, realistically, it takes me a couple months to check all the wines in the caves. I do three different tests, the free sulfur, bacteria, and pH. And so I'm checking those older wines so every on, two, three months. So on the sleeping wines, as you call them, you do three tests? Yeah. I mean, I guess you could say all the wines in there are aging and mm -hmm. going through. But the 09 wines, which may still have some fermentation going on, I just... What's what's an entire um, like array look like? Like a whole lab done? Okay. Um, well, you have your pH to check your acidity or base buffer. You have your volatile acidity to mm -hmm. check your bacteria, your free sulfur. You have your titratable acidity. Um, also check the alcohol, and then you check malic mm -hmm. to see if it's on through finished with if all the malic has been converted to lactic. Mm -hmm. And then you check your residual sugar. Because if the RS is too high in your bottle, the wine could go through fermentation. What's the RS? For residual our, for our, residual for our sugar. Viewers. Residual sugar. The sugars that are weren't converted mm -hmm. to alcohol by the yeast. And typically you don't want any residual sugar in red wine. It depends. I mean, it depends on your market. For a younger group, you might want a little more of a perceptible residual sugar because the younger palate likes a little more sugar. And like it just depends on the style you're going for. And like a peanut. Um, not necessarily. A lot of people who drink Pinot like it really dry, mm. and but they like that fruit coming out and that high acidity. Um, mm. Like for some of the blends we do here, like in Merlot Cuvée, that might have a little more, mm. might be a little sweeter. Um, and then if we need more sugar, then we just add, we might have to add some more sugar. And um, the sugar that's added is actually from grapes. It's a it's sugar concentrate made from yeah, grapes. Yeah, so it's not like not, you know, nasty yeah. table sugar. It's, it's not like we're dumping powdered sugar in the wine, yeah. don't worry. But it's, it don't refrain from that practice at some other places. Yeah, um, yeah so we do adjust, adjustments to the mm -hmm. wine over the course of the life cycle to make sure that it tastes right. And we usually do this with the bottle mm -hmm. to make sure everything tastes good. Well, let's look at some of the different pieces of equipment you need. Okay. Sweet.